systematic detachment from emotional reaction. Terrifying to realize how easy it is to be affected. It seems an emotional enema is next on the agenda. Flesh out the excess humanity. Whether what happened was a dream or not, it still signifies the start of something new and untainted by slavery to some external thing. I feel more whole than before, and that brings its own danger. That of self-servitude. Hey! Who the hell are you? You don't know me, but you'll want to. He, we have a lot in common. You and I, I've wanted to talk to you for so long. My name's Jimmy. But you can call me me. Get it? <laughs> I also like being called darkness. Pretty cool, huh? Anyhow, oh god, I, I can't believe I'm actually really here. Anyhow, I've been following you. How lovely. A few months back, I saw you at the Taco Hill across from the CD cesspool. You just had this look on your face. You looked so interesting, so I started following you around. But it wasn't easy, because you hardly... Um, are you going to ask me inside? Oh, do forgive me my lack of manners. By all means, do come in. Fuck yeah. Okay, tell me, dark, uh, guy, why have you been following me? Well, I'm a huge fan of your work. My work? What exactly are you talking about? I'm talking about what you do. I know what you do. I've seen your work. And from the first time I saw it, I knew I had to meet you. But every time I tried following you, I got lost for some reason. But here I am. You're something of a role model of mine. I even had some Noodle Boy comics I took from some bum. I only really saw you in the dark. But look, I even did my hair like yours. Hey, what happened to your hair? And your boots? You're not wearing your long boots. I like the long ones better. Either my hair burned off in hell, or I sleep shaved it during a really stupid dream. As for the boots, they were hurting my feet. Like I said, I only saw you in the dark, but still, I thought you'd be paler than you are, and you're shorter. I always kind of thought you would be a bit taller than- Excuse me, Mr. Jimmy person, you might want to leave now, as I find your company to be most repellent. Serves me right for being so damn social, I suppose. Now, please leave. You can't make me leave yet! Not until I've explained everything! I can't leave! I could arrange for that to be true, but at the moment, your legs are still attached to your body. Take advantage of that now. But I have so much to ask you, and so much to show you! I'm telling you, you'll really like me once you know what I'm all about. Come on! Who doesn't want someone to confide in? We are brothers of the mind! I'm serious. I'm a huge fan of your work. The, um, expressiveness of it. Though, I have to admit, I like your earlier stuff better. You didn't let the killing get to you so much. And you had more fun with it. Sometimes, it just wasn't funny. I liked it more when you would just kill. Instead of go on and on with all those words. That shit ain't cool. The blood is what matters. You just need someone to help you get back to that. And that's why I'm here. See, I know exactly how you feel. I was always the weirdo to people at school and all that shit. I used to write all their names down in a little kill book, but it was always just in my head. As much as I hated them, I could never really do anything. Always being laughed at and stared at and always planning on how I could get back at them, but never getting back. I know you, Johnny, because I am you, man. I just didn't know it until I saw your work at the Taco Hell. You work with the living canvas whose epithermal beauty is realized at the tiny moment that which the life has truly been extinguished from its shell. I've taken upon myself to become something of an apprentice to you, even making my own tools to work with. I'm ready now. And here's where you really get impressed. See, I've been practicing. There's no shortage of training dummies. <laughs> You'd be proud. There's my old first grade teacher. Oh, you should have seen her face when I took it off. But my favorite, oh, this one girl. It was a couple of months ago. You might have heard about it on the news. Oh, God, that was the best. She looked like this one girl that always laughed at me in high school. That's why I showed her. I followed her home a couple of times. But this one time, she sees me. And I just had to. I took her to the alley behind the mall. They found her like that with her clothes off. And kept going in... Please, excuse me, you know that feeling you get? The one where you just know you're gonna projectile vomit out of every orifice? I feel that right now. I want you away. 
Leave me to my vomit. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> ah, I see you've decided to follow me once again. <sighs> Let's continue along this artistic vein of discussion then, shall we? Imagine a sculptor being confronted by a stranger who, as it turns out, confesses to revere our sculptor. Imagine the flattery known to anybody who's told they've inspired some noble aspiration in somebody. The student then presents our sculptor with a work fashioned after the sculptor's own style, a likeness of the student himself. It is a monstrosity, a fucking mess. Even worse is that our artist sees that this piece of shit before him is a more reasonable facsimile of his own work than he'd like to think. You fucking idiot! Admire me? You shit! I'm the villain in this fucking story! No! You said wrong! You're, you're supposed to teach me! Okay. First lesson! Be a better judge of character. Second, just because we've similar interests does not guarantee you're going to like me. My foot in your ass is a good example of that. My delusionary hell does not agree with yours! And though this gets me no absolution, I would never do what you did to that girl! You abomination of mental subversion! Oh look! An orifice! How do you like being fucked with steel? Why? We... together... we could work together... so much alike... I just like you. I don't like myself much. On the loneliest rung of the evolutionary ladder, he is... Wobbly-Headed Bob. But I don't want to be stupid! Dear child, it cannot be helped. For despite the forgivable ignorance of youth, you are also likely being raised by imbeciles, poorly prepared for parenthood, capable only of perpetuating their genetic flaws. What tragedy it is to be just smart enough to know you are doomed to painful idiocy. Hey, get away from that kid right now! And stay away from everyone else, too! You're a terrible influence on everyone you talk to! You think you're helping them, but you make them horribly unhappy! Or worse, you make them feel like killing themselves! And the kids say your head is spooky! It is unfortunate that many are so ill-prepared to handle the truth. Fragile minds will collapse under the weight of it. Why should you care if these people are too stupid to know they should be miserable? Let them be! They're happy! So please, just leave them alone! So come on! Tell me I'm not crazy for hoping you would cooperate. Well... I'm so misunderstood. Hello? Hello, Debbie. Who? Johnny? Johnny, it's you, isn't it? What do you want? Hello? Don't bother talking. This will only play once, so I hope you'll listen to me. I know how hard this would be if I spoke in person. It's better this way. Eloquence is important here. As you may already know, I tried to kill you. I see how that could be construed as a bad thing, but the part that understands that is not the one running things in my little world. You like this girl, huh? Shh. I'm trying to hear my sincerity. Happiness and all its allure? They make no sense here. What's worse is that neither does discontent. In your case, with attraction in general, both feelings come in full force. One being the precursor to the other. Trust me, I intended to annihilate you in the nicest possible sense of the word. At the time, that is. See, I want to be different. Thing is, I've excluded happiness as one of those possibilities we seek for ourselves. Oh, I still want it, but that's beside the point. Contentment, they say it's the ultimate. But I can't even wish for that. I don't even want the desire to be content. I can only hope for silence. No, I'm not talking about suicide. That was Psycho Doughboy's thing. Oh, I didn't introduce you to him. He was one of my little styrofoam friends. Anyhow, I like you immensely, Debbie. And to prove it, I shall obliterate all of my affection and interest for you. Just like before, but different. I cannot hurt what I do not acknowledge. I don't know of anyone that I love, or of anyone that loves me. But I give you what I can. I give you my nothing. While I still have feeling, I wish to apologize. I know forgiveness is out of the question. I just ask for what we all ask of the people we respect. That the thought of me does not compel you to violent spasms of projectile vomiting. Blah, 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 blah. Hey. Hey, shut up. Shut that thing off. Pick up the phone, me, you little shit. I want to tell you what I've been doing these last few months. Do you know what I've been up to? I've been staying in a lot. 
You know why? Because with each attempt to meet a nice person, things get increasingly bad. Last time I tried, you pulled knives on me! I didn't want to try again for fear of something even worse! Hell, I haven't even left this place! You know what's worse than hiding from what scares you, do ya? I'll tell ya, it's having good things pass you by because you're too busy cringing in idiot terror, hiding someplace where all you can do is dwell on shit! And you think your little apology is going to make me happy as a truly little baby? Shit! I'm the person who's gonna make me happy. I am! No more hiding away. If you wanna kill me, just try it. I'll lose my boot down your throat. Hey! Hello! Hey, Johnny Boo! I don't hear you saying anything! What's wrong? Not full of fucked up wisdom today? Speak! Speak, you fuck! That could have gone better. Hello? Oh, hi, Cleo. Nothing. Dancing? Where? Hmm. Okay. I just have to do my hair and makeup. I'll be ready in three hours. Let's find a place to sit and see who's here. God, look at all these new people. I need a smoke. Yeah. Look at that guy's makeup. He looks like a fucking circus clown. Didn't anyone teach him how to do it the right way? Oh, there's that girl Tess. Ugh, what did she do to her hair? I can't believe Dylan ever went out with her. I can't believe she dumped him. I mean, he's in a band and all. Okay, that rubber dress on that fat girl's ass has got to go. I'm sorry, but that guy does not know how to dance. I would look so much better in those pants. Oh god, that guy looks like he's never worn a dress before today. This is my favorite song. I have to dance. I have to dance. Must dance. Favorite song, dance. Yes. Must. God, I was totally ignoring her and she didn't even say hi. I mean... Hey Morticia! Halloween's over! You can take off the costume! <laughs> <laughs> Slings and arrows, slings and arrows. Why must I be so persecuted for my differences? Hello, Mr. Samsa. Don't worry, I'm not gonna kill you again tonight. You were more used to me alive as a study tool. Aside from the vermin thing, you were quite the admirable character. Psst, hey me, been days since you've eaten anything. Don't you wanna go out, maybe get some Chinese? Hey, I've been meaning to ask you, who are you, and why do you keep following me? You're the only thing in here that can talk, but you don't sound like one of the Doughboys. Doughboys? Nothing but mere manifestations of a manifestation. You're awake now, Nee, and I'm no dream. I live inside of you. So then, you are like the Doughboys. Hardly. See, I'm holding up a giant hamburger. Ah, but I don't remember seeing you around here before. How did you get here? Ah. It terrifies me that you wouldn't remember. No, it's no surprise. You don't remember the pretty girl that gave me to you. Being in her room, doing what you did, what she did to you. The girl's not important, but the motivation is. Until now, there's been no need for me to surface. You see, I fear I may soon join the other figments in their silence. It is urgent that you cease this ghastly pursuit of desensitization. There is a disturbing association in your mind between feeling and weakness. I concur that it does present a vulnerability, but it means openness to pleasures, to pains, to grievance and rapture. What other creatures know such things? And you would cast it off like an itchy turtleneck. Blasphemy of your species, your body screams for input. I am the sun on your face, the touch of soft skin, the feel of real cotton. I am a rope around your neck, feather across your back, blood and toothpaste. I am the sensation of all these things. I am your connection to everything. You seem to be just another version of Mr. F. He could never have been so focused, and my only goal is to stay alive, to keep you hungry. Kill my stomach if I'm hungry! Shut off my want if I'm lonely! Tear off my genitals if I'm aroused! 
Excess, so much excess, and so much superfluous nonsense, and I want nothing to do with it if I can help it. Clear the room of all this ancestral furniture and rebuild it the way I want to. Flush the toilet, boys. It stinks in here. Get it? My mind stinks. Cluttered up with all its damaged files and corrupt machinery. Programmed and programmed and programmed and programmed. It's too much. Unlike Samsa here, doing simply what it takes and nothing more. Just add to that a pure human intellect. And think of how much work you could do. No distractions. You were born a feeling creature. There is no unlearning of your nature. Therefore, there is no choice. You're sick, but you're smart. You can't help but know that I'm right on this. Come on, let's go dancing. Resist! Use that stuff, me! Use that stuff! Mail bunny? No! No! I'm not gonna do this! If anyone's gonna give it, it's you! Dream or not, I just got through being a slave. The last thing I need now is to quarrel with my own organics. It should go willingly. I should own it. I have my freedom. No such thing! No such thing! I'm a slave to nothing! You little burger eating kind of meanie guy! Nothing! There is no choice. You're always a slave to something. Good night, Sanguin! Good night, Darklings. Remember, we're playing Vampire the Perpetual Hassle at my place tomorrow. You're late, Eric. And it's a school night. Wash that crap off your face and do your homework! Whatever, Dad. Moron. <sighs> Another day in this dreary life of mine. Oh, how I dream of being like one of the characters in these books I read. An escape from mortality into a reality of eternal beauty and youth. The feet of the blood of those who only serve to stain this earth with their ugly presence. Playing games just isn't enough. I want this more than anything. Then I could show those normals at school. I would be the only freshman vampire, and they would all fear me and invite me to all their parties. Yes, please, somebody rescue me from this hell of inferiority. I deserve better than to have to endure the stupidity of those who do not share my interests in music. People should look at me when I go to concerts, and should want to speak to me, even when I am completely ignoring them. I will be more powerful than any creature found in any role-playing game. Please, come for me on Dark Wings. I am here to prove that some people can answer prayers, my pretty boy. Hmm, I guess you really aren't that pretty, though. Ish. All oh, that makeup's clogging up your pores. Oh, sick. Look at... Oh, anyhow, I am here for you. Oh, my Magnus! My dark savior! You will bite me? Yes, but for some reason there won't be a panel showing that. I... I can feel it happening! Yes. Oh, I feel so strange! Becoming... Becoming... Bald! I'm becoming bald! Why is my hair falling out? This isn't how it happened in interview! Wait, wait, something's happening. Yes, yes, my awareness! Growing consciousness, expanding my... Oh no! What's wrong with my head? It's huge! Yeah! What the? What's wrong with my ears? What's going on? I don't like this! This isn't how it's supposed to... Hey, what's that tingling? Hey, my teeth! My fangs! I'm finally getting my real fangs! My beautiful fangs! Oh, they're bigger than I... The... Oh dear God! Look at me! Why have you done this to me? This isn't anything like what I wanted! What kind of horrible trick is this? Head, so heavy! <laughs> dear child, your little books delude you. Time is necessary for the change to be more favorable to you. Why, it takes years of feeding to attain this beauty you seek. Persist and be rewarded, though I find your newness beautiful in itself. No, oh, look at the time. I'm missing X-Files. Farewell. What's that smell? <gasps> Ew. Fuck, he smells like cabbage. Dude, I fell on a pole during gym, and his head looks like my nutsack did. No way! This isn't how I thought it would be, but I can still show them, staring at me, 
Just wait until they see what I can do. They'll see me take my first victim, and then they'll know not to mess with me. Oh, I feel it. The hunger. I feed. Ugh, smells bad. This is awful. I'm a freak. A freak. Boo. Boo. Sub. He said it would take time. I just have to wait. That fucking vampire. <laughs> Psst. Psst. Hey, Squeegee, wake up. It's me. Hello. I just used my basement tool to get here. Neat, huh? Anyhow, I just wanted to say goodbye before leaving. Are you moving away? Oh no, don't worry. I'm just going on a bit of a holiday. But you'll be on your own for a while. I won't be here to help you out like I used to. So I want you to be very, very careful. It's a frightening world to be alone in. Hey, son! What's going on in there? It's your dad. I'll hide under the bed until he goes away. Wouldn't it be funny if I shoved a knife up through this mattress? <laughs> Who are you talking to? One of your imaginary friends? Like the voice in your teddy bear? Or the scary neighbor man? I know you think we're not paying enough attention to you, and, well, there's a good reason for that. You see, son, I resent your existence. Okay, maybe that's a bit harsh. No way, it's true. I really despise my life, and you're a major factor in that. Whew, feels good to have this talk with you. Do you know what it's like to be trapped into a life you never planned on having? I mean, look at me. I can't believe I have this shitty job I do. And it's even more unbelievable that I have a kid. It's like having a roommate you can't just kick out. You know, I had other plans for myself. This is nothing like how things should have been. You shouldn't be here. I shouldn't live here. And your stinking mother wouldn't be doing all that shit she does. Little kid, I'm sorry nobody loves you. But just think about it. Think of how miserable I am. And how much of that is your fault? I... Sorry about that, but it didn't look like he'd be shutting up anytime soon. And I've no time to wait. Oh, don't worry about him. He'll be up in a while. He might be permanently blind, though. Oh, well, that should make it easier to get away with stuff. Of course, being blind, he might develop a keen sense of hearing. That might not be good. You know, if you like, I could do something to his ears. Have you got a ligament stick? Oh, but then he'll just fine-tune his sensitivity to vibrations. Hmm... We'd have to do some work on a central nervous system. I'll need some tweezers and shoelaces. Who? But what if he becomes some kind of olfactory ninja? This is very difficult. I mean, we can't kill him. A kid needs a dad. But I digress. Hmm. We don't have any video games. That's very sad. Very, very sad. I like monkeys. So, are you gonna chop me up and put me in the garbage now? Because Shmi tells me you're a bad guy. He says this is a bad place to be. Please don't chop me up. Okie dokie. Listen, Squee, I just want to make sure you'll watch out for yourself. That unconscious man on the floor is just one of your worries. I'm just concerned. It's easy to be affected by your fears, your hatred. I don't want to see that happen to you. You seem like such a nice little Squee. It must be nice to still have the opportunity to save the cohesion of your pretty mind. The best some people can hope for is to better manage their damage. I'll be on my way now. I still have a few things to take care of before I leave. Hey, I'm going out the window this time, okay? The underground tunnel's gotten a bit thick with corpses. Good luck, Squee! Sleep tight! Happy New Boy! In today's episode, our hero is doing something, and then he does something else. And somewhere else, little Billy is being eaten by weasels! Billy's dad, the weasel farmer, is mean! Quit measuring your thing! Can I help you? In this pathetic deception! I know you're hiding Martians in your head! Give me the Martians! I am going to put butter on them! Martians! Ah! What the hell are you talking about? Bloody fuck monkey! Refuse my request of love? Hear this blood feud ends! Grandpappy! Grandpappy rub my feet! Me feet, Grandpappy! Leave me alone. You are scared. 
Your testicular shrieky moment is worthless! You have invoked an evil older than man, older than croutons! Now I feed! And he's been eating grass for the last three hours. Hmm. He's a sick man. I will talk to him. Hey, you! Stop eating the grass! This isn't some kind of grass-eating kind of place where you can eat grass! Hear me! I am the law! Too late! My mighty stomach chambers have already processed the grass people in delicious grade A milk! I milk on thee! Ugh! He's pissing on us! You fucking lunatic! Stop! Don't make me shoot your groin! It burns! It burns! My scheme is complete! Soon all the children of the world will be dipped in fung lum sweet and sour sauce! They will be sweet and sour! Ha! Sonic the Hedgehog! Utenjiu! Biomidito! Gozaimzu! Boo! You nibbler of damn beaver nuts! Quick, stop him before he pees again! I am a woman of peace, so it hurts me to use even this minimal force! Story time with Happy Noodle Boy! So, once, the little girl was playing Uncle Wiggly, and something went wrong. Tell it bees! You don't know what a rash is! Look at my thighs! A million cows came flying in from within the void! I hate this fucking commercial! Banana Quick! I miss Banana Quick! The zoo chases me, but they won't win! So, she's playing Uncle Wiggly, and her diaper needs changing, cause she's 87 years old, and there's bits of carrots in it, and a scary baboon! Fly! Carbon Blood Flactorial Teen Hump! Stand back from my funky self! You think, but you're not plywood! I love you, my little exit wound! The end! Dear Diary, the passions that drive us should be the ones we respect and admire. To feel contempt for one's own motivations is a vulgar thing. Too often, it seems, I've succumbed to less than admirable compulsions. Driven by this furiously reprehensible machine of mine, so many things inside that I can do without. Desires, and urges, and whatnot. So extraneous. By the time I write in this book again, I hope to be as cold as the moon that lights this page. <laughs>